tell me your name. Brenda Jones. Brenda Darden Jones. Okay. And when were you born? 1943. February 19, 1943. Okay. Um, and where were you born? Flint, Michigan. Okay. And did you grow up in Flint, Michigan? No, I grew up in Albany, Georgia. Okay, and when did you end up coming to Albany, Georgia? I was about two weeks old. Okay, now, and who were your parents? My mother's name is Birdine Green. I never know my father, but I know the people that raised me were the, the Boldens. Okay. Uh, John and Irene Bolden. Okay. okay. Now, my, we consider ourselves a sister. One of my sisters taught at Albany State. Very old. Okay. So, um, okay. Now, um, upon your arrival in Albany, what are some of your first childhood memories of growing up in Albany in a Jim Crow system in the South? Oh, it was bad. It was. It was. It was at one time, we didn't really pay it any attention. You know. You, we were raised by the elderly people, so you know you're not able, you're not going to say anything because just so much you can say because they don't allow you to say but so much. Just like my uncle, well, he's my uncle, but he was going to raise me. He got mad at me because I wouldn't tell a white man, yes, sir. Okay, that leads us to somewhere else. In your growing up, and with that memory that you just told me about, did you find, like I've talked to some of the other students, that you had a rebellious spirit against yes, yes, the yes, Jim I Crow did. system? Yes, um, I now, I, I, this is one question I want to ask you because I usually ask this of the students from 61 when they talk about this rebellious spirit. Was this something that naturally came to you? Yes. There was no incident, say, that made you see something and changed who you would become in that respect. Yes, there were quite a few incidents that okay. made me change to get it. The reason I got into movement and stuff, there were a few change things that I went through. Um, Can you give me an, an example? When I was a little girl, a little bitty girl, uh, there was a, a white man that owned a store on the corner, and I had a very small dog, kind of like Sasha. And I went in the store. My grandmother lived up the street. My great grandmother lived up the street, and she sent me to the store to get something. And the dog ran in the store behind me. He told me, "Nigga, get that damn dog out of here." I'm a little girl, I'm about six, seven, eight years, about seven years old. So I'm running around the store trying to catch my fine caught in the dog. And I got out with the dog went up to the house next thing, no, that's a dog catcher at my door. So I told my grandmother, I, I ran up on the bed, beat myself and the dog. Hit up on the bed. Do you know they drug myself and the dog out? And they took they took the dog away permanently. Took the dog away. I've had a dog there since I was about five or six years old. As I grew older, I started disliking white people. I just, I hated them. I mean, you know, I hated them. We had to walk to school. They rode the bus. They throw water and stuff out the window on us. And we had to walk. While they ride, we walked all the way from Libby Drive to First Avenue. And that's over there by Phoebe Putnam Hospital. Cause Phoebe's on second and we live on first and you know what Libby Drive is. And we walked to London to Libby Drive to school and back. Before we moved to Libby Drive, we was on car on Monroe, which was Carver. That's the school was on the high school was on, on we were the first class to graduate from the new school. We weren't allowed to do certain, you know, just like I said, we couldn't ride the buses and we couldn't do this and we couldn't do that. And we just didn't feel right, so we started. We started fighting back. Okay. Before. Now. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I had uh, 
I had to find me a job. And this is as a young person, teenager. Teenager. Oh, okay. This is a teenager. Oh, okay. 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 As a teenager, at the uh, right across in front of the jail house. Oh. There was a restaurant there. Mm -hmm. It's a hotel and a restaurant there. I went in a girlfriend of mine, fair skinned, light skinned, and beautiful hair. She and I went in there both looking for a job. Mm -hmm. They hired. We'll fill out, we'll fill out applications. They hired her. They told me the only job they had was a dishwasher. That period. Because I had sense enough to know what it was about. I had sense enough to know what it was all about. Black, you stand back. So did you end up taking the job as a dishwasher? No, I did That's what I was going to I figured that you told them, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I didn't say no, thank you. I just left. Wow. Wow. What are some other incidents that you remember? Because, see, when you graduated, there is this hotbed going on because of the University of Georgia and the integration of it in January of 1961. Well, I went to the bus station. Okay. So it's the same place it is now. Okay. To get a sandwich and a soda. I could buy the sandwich, but I had to stand outside and eat it. So I told the lady that was okay, I didn't want it. Water fountain was outside and I didn't drink out of the water fountain. But I started building a whole lot, you know, do a lot of things that I Knew had sense enough to know what was going on with the, between the black and the white. Because we would go walking on Sundays and jump on the white girls. All right, man, that's a no one for me. <laughs> you were bold. Yeah, we would jump on them. And wow. then they'd be just crying. We didn't do anything to you all. Why you want to hit us? We didn't do anything. You was a old. teenager when you were doing I was a teenager when I did that. Wow. I was living on First Street. I remember all of that. And now uh, one year we jumped on him, I guess the guy hit the police picked us up. He scared us so bad, he told us he was going to take us to jail, but he took us to my girlfriend's house. We might well tell her, what you had took me to jail? Because her mama called my aunt, and boy, oh boy, what a roll in that wall. <laughs> he told them what we did and all, and, and uh, we got a whipping for it. Just because out of anger. Out of anger. And you had whooped on them. All this is spitting and going on, on, you know, and you know they're going to say they didn't do it. And it might have been the main one that did it. Bus go by, here comes some water out the window. Spit, hitting you in the head and the face. And they just pee. And I know they're peeing in balls, throwing it out the window at us, you know. But we went through all of that. Okay, so now, now we're, we're teenagers. Okay, now we, I, I had asked you a question about um, your freshman year. So tell me, tell me some more about what else was going on. Because I know you said you were doing what you were supposed to do as a freshman coming in. What, what made you deviate away from the normal college student life of an African American in 1961 at Albany State College? I really don't remember why. Okay. I just um, I joined the movement. Okay. Did you did you join SNCC? Were you in the uh, NAACP youth count, um, group? I was in neither group. I just got I was in Stop March. Oh. Okay. Okay. And uh, and and. What was the first march that you participated in? The one that they picked us up on. Uh, oh, Dr. King and Reverend Abernathy. When Dr. King first came to In December. Albany. Yes. He first came to Albany. And uh, 
they were marching and we were out of school, so we decided that we would, I would, my girlfriends and I would get in and march too. Of course, I don't know why I wind up in the line, because they all backed out on me and went back the other way. Wow. They didn't march, no. Wow. I did. And wind up in jail. Wow. And they all been in jail from the Albany jail to the Moultrie jail. I mean, Camilla. Okay, now take take me back because you moved through that real quick. Do you happen to remember why it was you guys were marching with Dr. King that December? Had something happened? Well, we well we had been to a, we had went to a, a meeting at the church at Mount Zion or Shotgun. Okay, yes. and. We don't want to know who all want to march and why we were marching and what was the reason for it. So going back to all that I had been through and then thinking about my children, I have children. They were not knowing that this was going to come up like it came up. You know, all this, you know, coming out about the Baldwin movie. We just knew it was just... You know, we, after we marched and went to jail, that would be the end of it. But we did it, and uh, I, like I told my grandson, I said, "Baby, I said this," and I said, "Sure, I said, you just don't know what your grandma went through to get you where you are today." He yes, asked me what, and I said, "I ain't talked to him and told him about it." Okay. Now, in the do, do you remember anything specific about the march itself? How it started out, you know, and what songs you guys sang, and all those different things about the march all the way up until the arrest. We should. Well, we were saying we should overcome. Uh, old freedom. It was quite a few of them because I was one of the singers, myself, Bernice, and Ruth Harris. And it was quite a few songs, but I, I can't okay. memorize all of them. Okay. But I, I do know We Shall Overcome, Old Freedom, and uh, um, I'm not going to, ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Okay. Now, um, moving away from the Freedom Song, what are some of the specific events that you remember happened during that march with Martin Luther King in December? Well, we went to jail. Uh, well, before you guys went to jail, do you remember anything about um, Chief Pritchett, any of his men, any of that talking stuff? Talking ugly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they were talking ugly. Now, we weren't in the group that the dogs got on, out of water. We were already in jail when that happened. Oh. Okay. When they put the water and the dogs on. We were oh. already in jail. We stayed in jail about two weeks in, in uh, uh, Camilla. And without eating, we wouldn't eat. Wow. We fast because, you know, that defeated the purpose, you know. They bring me brought, I'll never forget what we had, because I know I've never, never been to jail since then. And I know what they had in jail, grits, sausage, and, and grease, and a slice of light bread. That what they brought us every morning. I don't remember what we had for dinner, or whatever it was we didn't eat that. How did you get out of jail once you were in? I stayed in until they let us all out. Okay, so you refused bail. I refused bail. My okay. sister came up there to get me out, and I wouldn't get out. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, she brought food, and I wouldn't accept it. Huh. I mean, then why would I go in there? Then go in there and then get bailed out. Mm -mm, I didn't get out till, uh, until they let us all out. After I got out of jail. Well, we continued the movement because we you know we still went to the mass meetings and you know and kept that all you know going until Dr. King left. 
called me and went back to uh Okay, okay. So so did you Montgomery. did you participate in the boycott of the department stores? Yes. Okay. Um, were you were you a part of the marching that took place of the young folks there at the storefronts? Yes. I know we weren't allowed to ride the buses. We weren't allowed to ride the uh, to go in the we didn't go in the stores, couldn't buy anything. That hurt. That hurt we wanted to go, but you know you I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. But um, it was it was it was a battle. It was a hard battle. It was just kind of rough. It was rough in those days. I would like to tell them that um, it's important that they do better than what they're doing because they think everything is, 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 is fine for them now, but it's not. Because what we went through in the years, this is the reason that they are where they are now, but if they don't straighten up and Go to school. Go to school. Don't 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 stop. Drop out of school. Go to school because you're gonna need it. You're gonna need every bit of it because it's not easy. It hasn't been easy, and still it's gonna get harder. It's gonna get harder, and they don't understand that. You don't understand that uh, what we went through. You go winding right back in the. You are in the same shoe. You just don't see it. It's in the background. You can't figure it out. You don't know it, but it's it's, it's still here. The white man is still in charge. You just you just don't understand what's going on. So we didn't we didn't go march and go to jail and do all this stuff just to see you all fail on us and don't do what you can do to save what we have fought so hard to get because it's it's been a hard it's, it's been a hard thing. And don't don't fail us. Just try to do what you can do to keep the movement going. Don't drop it off. Don't don't just quit on us. Just continue because it's it's hard. It's, it's been a hard road. 